All right, this is video 15, and we were just looking at the consensus statement um, from the original list analyses file. And we notice here that number six, statement number six, right, is a, listed as a consensus statement. It says that this is factor one placed this at minus two, and factor two placed it at minus five, and then the one underneath that number seven is also similarly spaced. That's a space of three, right? It ends up that some software actually just calculates it based on Z scores and like I believe PQ method does and like Quantal, the old Quantal program actually looked at the differences between positions. If we come over here, we'll look to see if six or seven is listed, right? As a distinguishing statement. And it doesn't look like it is. There's seven. Just something to keep in mind. So here we see seven is also listed as both consensus and distinguishing. Right? The difference between the rank is the same as statement number six. But the difference between... The Z score is a little more for seven than six, and that's how it's ended up as a distinguishing statement, but it's also ended up as a consensus statement. It really can't be in both places. I because they're spaced apart by three, I would actually I would actually cross it off of this list. And I would leave it as a distinguishing statement means that I might decide that for six I might get rid of that one too so when I would look through the so here we can see this is truly consensus they're both at minus three here this is plus one and minus two so we can go and look to see if it's also listed as distinguishing statements so same with 40, I prefer courses that challenge me, minus 1 and minus 4, right? And so we might go up and see if 40 is listed also as distinguishing. It may or may not be, no. Oh, no, there it is. I prefer, right? So it's in both places. So like number 7, I think I would, I would cross this out here and I would just consider it a distinguishing statement. Because, right, minus 1 and minus 4 is 3 rows or columns over. And I would kind of stick with, with that idea. So you can see how I like to annotate, right? It helps me remember all these things. And I have a file that's relatively easy to find. Um, the PDF allows me to annotate much better than Notepad. And actually, I think much better than Word. Um, so what? Uh, this is basically how I do that. I then take this information and I copy it into an Excel spreadsheet. Um, it literally using copy and paste and delimit delimiting um, within that space inside the, the Excel file. And I will upload my Excel file for you so that you can um, play around with it a little bit and use it for your week three analyses I think it makes it a lot easier to make your tables in Excel you could just come in here and grab these but they're not nice looking and they're harder to play around with um, usually publishers have problems with z-scores especially if you're publishing in a journal that is a little more geared towards the qualitative they like the grid positions. It's easier to explain. So that's how I usually do my tables. I eliminate the z-scores and just have the grid positions. Sometimes you'll see studies that literally have that grid again. And they just show it with the statement numbers inside that grid. That's also a good way of doing a presentation of the normalized, right, the representative sorts for each factor.